not to label foods. So you see so many people label foods as good or bad. We eat excessively because we're trying to get that taste or get that satisfaction, but the taste ain't gonna change, girl, whether you have a packet or one. Let's look at ways to escape food phobia. Life is not perfect and neither are we. Welcome to Raw and Unhinged. Lara and Steph will be bringing you real and insightful chats on health, psychology, fitness, and nutrition. Lara is a qualified nutritionist and fitness enthusiast who loves her pizza, and Steph, a registered psychologist, author, and renowned brunch queen. We hope you're ready for today's chat. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Raw and Unhinged, part two of our food phobia series. How are you today, Lara? I'm good. How are you? So Steph and the rest of Melbourne is back in lockdown. So we'll do a little bit of a life update. How are you going? Yeah, you know what? Lockdown 2.0 is a lot harder for people because they know what to expect and they, they are struggling. Yeah. But, you know, I've put together a mindset reset challenge, which has been really good. It's keeping my mindset nice and fresh and helping a lot of other people. So look, one day at a time. That's how we're going. Yeah. I am secretly kind of scared because I'm obviously in Sydney that Sydney might go into lockdown, but our numbers are all right. I don't know. I just got this. I have this bad feeling, but hopefully everything stays safe. Everyone stays safe and everything like that. It must be so hard going back into isolation. I feel like you had a taste of freedom and it's been yeah. taken away from you. I feel That's like you're a little kid. It's like, no, you can't eat that. It's like, go back into isolation. Yeah. Everyone, you know, at the start, it was a bit of a novelty in ISO 1. And I think now yeah. people it's like something's being taken away. Whereas that wasn't the feeling, you know, first and foremost. And, and that brings us back to our topic today, which is so relevant because as we go back into ISO, binge eating is likely to increase. Drinking is likely to increase. And that's why we're talking about that food phobia, which is tied into that fat phobia, which is the fear of gaining weight. So that's what we're going to aim for today. We're going to pick up where we left off last week, which was let's look at ways to escape food phobia. Right. So Steph's going to talk about a few psychological techniques and I'm just going to talk about a few behavioral ones and especially ones that, you know, I use and utilize in everyday life, especially when I talk to my clients as well. So one thing that I always recommend to people, especially those experiencing food phobia is not to label foods. So you see so many people label foods as good or bad. And that's because, you know, we went into this last episode that, you know, people obviously go with a food that's bad when they have bad experiences with it. You know, maybe they ate all this chocolate after a breakup and then they put on weight. So they're going to, you know, put that right towards their breakup and bad feelings and everything like that. So not labeling foods as good as bad. And that's what I do. So I label foods as a sometimes food. So for me, chocolate is a sometimes food. Pizzas are sometimes food, everything like that. So it makes me realize that, you know, these foods aren't bad, but there are sometimes food and I am allowed to have them in my diet. Steph, what do you think of that one? Yeah, I absolutely love that. And you're so right because that type of thinking in psychology is called all or nothing thinking or black and white thinking. I always eat bad or I never have enough of this or it's good or it's bad. So if you notice your mind engaging in that all or nothing thinking, like Lara said, create some gray area like a sometimes food or um, yes, I didn't eat ideally, but it wasn't all bad because when you think you eat bad, you feel bad and then you're going to engage in bad behavior essentially. So that's a really- Exactly. And you still want to eat these foods. Like for me, I love pizza. I love chocolate and I never want to cut them out of my life. Yes, I did associate them with weight gain, but it's only because I had a lot of it when I was overweight. You know, I'd have top deck every day. I'm not eating chocolate every day now. My diet is quite balanced and quite consistent. So I don't associate, you know, chocolate and pizza with weight gain anymore. Um, I think that's really important to remember as well. Yeah, you made a really good point is the association. And it's it comes down to the appraisal of the food. It's not the donuts, it's not the pizza, it's not the broccoli, it is your appraisal, i.e. the yep. meaning you attach to that food, which affects how you feel and controls your behavior. So excellent point. I'm going to go into a psychological technique we use, which is basically exposure therapy. So if you're someone trying to overcome a food phobia or exposing yourself to new foods, 
expose yourself to new food. So eat it, even though it feels uncomfortable and sit with that discomfort, especially in eating disorder land or world. If it feels wrong, it usually is right. So take that step, have a pizza for dinner. I was about to say go out with friends, but I so, um, you know, have a food that you wouldn't normally eat and sit with that discomfort, go to bed, distract yourself and wake up knowing that you didn't die. You didn't get obese from eating that food. You know, you are okay and safe and you can have that food and it's not the end of the world. So that's what the exposure to foods you feel uncomfortable with will teach you. I've got a question in that one just because it's very interesting going into that. So what I, well, I obviously have like a number of clients who have eating disorders as well. Obviously I'm a nutritionist, you're a psychologist, so you would see it a lot. So what if you have a girl who can't sit with that discomfort? Yeah, what's a strategy she might be able to use? Yeah. Well, number one is changing the word can't because as soon as you say the word can't, your brain embodies that and believes it. So she can say sitting with discomfort is going to be extremely challenging, but I can try. So normally if that discomfort resorts in her binging, purging, whatever it is, sitting with it as long as possible. So even delaying the adverse reaction. So you know, I have, it's like with OCD or binge eating, I'll say sit with a discomfort as long as you possibly can, if not yeah. you know, until the next day. But if you have to yeah. engage in that behavior, at least delay it. And that's still a progress over perfection step and breathing, yeah. reading, just yeah. allowing. I do know one thing that you taught me as well, especially when I was going through a lot of food struggles and I started like binging on food. You told me to practice mindful eating too. And I think that's really important when it comes to, you know, food anxiety and food phobia, you know, especially when you go to those bad foods, if you practice, you know, if you actually taste the food, close your eyes, you don't have to close your eyes at the dinner table, but if you actually, you know, taste the food, slow down, put your food away and actually like take charge of what you're eating and actually, you know, feel what you're eating too. I think that's really important other than mindless eating, which is something totally different too. You actually taught me that, which was really helpful in overcoming, you know, the urge to binge and everything like that. Yeah. I've noticed that as well because I eat really fast and I eat like I'm in a rush. Yeah. When you told me to slow down, you know, just practice mindful eating, sit with it, you know, and if you're, and I even use this with my clients as well. I actually had a client this morning and she was a binge eater and I told her she should practice mindful and mindful eating and go for a walk, go distract yourself. And then if you're still hungry later, then of course eat. But if you're not hungry, that means you're just eating for boredom too. So that's really important to remember. Yeah, absolutely. So sit with your food, no distractions, eat your food. This is something I'm working on as well. One thing I heard the other day, which blew my mind was, one Tim Tam is going to taste the same as 12. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. <laughs> we, eat, we eat excessively because we're trying to get that taste or get that satisfaction, but yeah. the taste ain't going to change, girl, whether you have a packet or one. Yeah. And I guess people eat so much as well that, you know, it comes to food phobia and food anxiety when they want to fill that void when they have this piece missing and, you know, they just want to, you know, maybe it's relationship issues. Maybe it's daddy, daddy issues. Maybe it's mummy issues, something like that. So people eat for a reason and people are scared of some foods for a certain reason as well. And I think that you need to realize that. And also in isolation, what this did to me as well was it made me take a step back and it realized, you know, I have to confront my feelings. I have to do this and I have to do that. And that really helped me overcome some food phobias too. And, you know, actually realized that I needed to have balance and consistency in my life. So that's important too. Absolutely. The goal is to be sustainable and realistic mm -hmm. with what's going on. And even if you do overindulge, even if you binge eat that it's less distressing and it's okay. So We've spoken about exposure and sitting with this discomfort to approach food phobia or foods you're a bit scared to eat with or eat on. Is there any other strategies that you would recommend? I definitely, well, I live by this and I always say have a balanced approach. You know, I always say to my clients, if you want to eat out, you can eat out, but just do it in moderation and be smart about it, you know, and make sure you don't go in with an all or nothing approach. So just say you ate, something that you're discomforted by. Don't go and go eat something else that makes you even more uncomfortable or don't go into a total binge. You know, just sit with it and don't go into the all or nothing approach. And one big thing is, you know, if you fucked up, if you had a bad day, if you ate something that, you know, 
you didn't really want to eat and you feel bad about yourself, don't turn it into a full day or a full week. I think that's super important. And one big thing that, you know, helped me overcome food phobia, because I often associated, you know, bad foods, well, now sometimes food with weight gain, was realizing that they don't make you gain weight only if you eat them a lot. And, you know, because I'm consistent in my diet and I have a lot of balance as well, I still go out, but in during the week, my diet is quite balanced and quite good that, you know, I can go out and have these foods. And that totally got rid of my food phobia because I realized that, these foods aren't associated with weight gain and I can still enjoy these foods in moderation. And I think that's super mm. important. And that's what I preach to a lot of my clients as well. You're going to have these foods, just be consistent and have them in moderation. Yeah, absolutely. So just tying all that up and I'm going to give you, you and the viewers, you know, some strategies to take away from this is number one, what Lara said, be mindful of your words. Your words are your world and notice if yeah. you're engaging in black and white thinking when it comes to food. Number two, as Lara mentioned, is notice your appraisals, the meaning you give to foods, i.e. Yeah. pizza will make me fat. Notice that meaning that you're putting with foods and create a, a break between that link. The third thing yeah. I would recommend is writing a list of all your anxiety provoking foods, whether it's breads, pasta, whatever. Pick one food a week and integrate that in your day to day and use that as your food exposure. Eat the food, sit with that discomfort, try and engage in meditation or reading or something that's useful to take your mind, um, you know, to be able to sit there with it. And I promise over time, your exposure to the food will become less distressing. Yeah. And guys also just remember, like don't associate these foods with, you know, your fears. Like for me, my fear was weight gain and I associated these fears with this. So just remember that these foods don't cause it. It's all, you know, it's all a mind game as well at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. That was a great episode. We'll pop more links below where you can find us and we can't wait to see you next time. Also, guys, we want requests from you as well. So, guys, make sure you comment below with our next episode request because we want to talk about what you guys want to hear. So, make sure you comment below. Can't wait to see you next time.